And you can tell that the artist actually cares about what it is other than just trying to make a hit record or mm -hmm. exactly. whatever. Well, this day and age, everybody just releases singles. It's one single after another after another, and you don't really see a whole lot of concept albums. Yeah. Uh, is, is that else. what y'all are trying to do with all of your albums, like concept albums, like one song leads into another? Maybe maybe not all of them. Yeah, I think that's sort of the tentative plan is to continue the story and, and for whatever amount of time it's natural. You know what I mean? Like if there, if it comes to a point where we're like we're trying to shoehorn music into a concept and let it go, you know, whatever's yeah. natural, that's what we generally try to go for. Well, well, the whole concept albums back in the day, I mean, that was uh, it, it made the music more than just music. Right. It was it, it was an experience, right? Like Pink Floyd's The Wall is a great example because you had the mm -hmm. movie that came with it, you had mm -hmm. the the album that you couldn't just listen to number six. Or Sergio yeah. Simpson, Sound and Fury, man. That oh yeah, is so sick. That yeah. anime is so sick. And, and, and just like whenever you put on a record, like you, you can't just jump around. It's you have to sit and listen to it to the front to the beginning. Right. And it's almost like a movie that you just kind of imagine whatever was, in your head. That was like the. It's exactly exactly like yeah. a movie. I want each song to feel like a little vignette of its own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that's where we kind of straddle that line. Like we wanted to do a concept album, but we also wanted each song to be viable on its own. You know, so you can pick any song to listen to, but the optimal way to experience it would be front to back, listen to the album. Yeah, like, you know? well, Pink Floyd had, you know, another brick in the wall, but you have, if you really want the experience, you have to listen to the happiest days of our lives mm -hmm. right before it. Mm -hmm. You you don't see that or often like, uh, nowadays in spaces music. Spaces and uh, Young Lust. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Big into Pink Floyd. Oh, man. Dude, I, your shirt, man, where did you get that? That's... Uh, I've never seen that kind of a Pink Floyd shirt before. Honestly, man, I think my old lady picked that up at a Goodwill. Love Goodwill. Shout out to Goodwill. <laughs> Thrift Shout store, out to Goodwill. baby. Shout out to Goodwill for sure. They got all kinds of good stuff. Man, yeah, I, dude, I, I probably own at least 15 Pink Floyd shirts. And that, and uh, we were talking about collecting vinyl right before we hopped on air, and mm -hmm. that's probably like the most vinyl that I have is Pink Floyd. I try to sort those out because, yeah, it's it's great to listen to an album like Dark Side of the Moon. And just front to back. I probably have more Pink and Floyd, Pink Floyd inspired tattoos than I do T-shirts, though. What kind of tattoos do you well, got? I mean, I got on bricks the on the wall. Yeah, all over, and like that's an ambigram that says Pink one way. When you turn around, it says Floyd. That oh, way. that's sick! That's so cool. They mean a whole lot to me. A whole Gigantic lot. amount, of, and I don't think anybody's yeah. ever done the concept album better than Pink Floyd, oh, or no. just rock and roll in general. I don't know that anybody will ever meet or surpass surpass Pink Floyd and what they did. I can agree with that. The or hundreds of years beyond their time, like, no. we still haven't caught up with. It's perfectly them. timeless. Like that music will be relevant forever. And and if you look like see nowadays, it's easy to create something that's experimental and weird and all that. You just throw a bunch of random stuff together. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, man, they had to splice tape. They had... I, if you if people, like, really read into the behind-the-scenes on Pink Floyd albums, it's crazy. The, yeah. uh, <clears throat> the time. What was the producer of their al album? Alan... Oh, yeah, Alan. I, you said I, it too quick. Alan. Yeah. He, he, was a, he, he was a solo artist himself. Uh, the Alan is something Alan project. Alan, 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 oh, Alan Parsons. Alan Parsons. Alan, yeah. Alan Parsons project. Yeah, That's yeah. It. He uh, he was the producer on that album. And for time, whenever you hear all the clocks, he actually went to an actual antique store and recorded all of the clocks individually. He did a and, good job with the field recording for that time <laughs> period, man. Did, That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like they just and and the uh, the pennies. I forget how how they done it, but they just it is all this cool I mean, information like behind the like, scenes. Pink Floyd has left an indelible mark on all music that has existed since they were a thing. Like synthesizers would have never, I don't think they would have ever caught on like they did had it not been for Pink Floyd yeah. pioneering yeah, that and popularizing it. I mean, you wouldn't have, like, <laughs> it's kind of weird to think that you wouldn't have ain't nothing but a G thing if it wasn't for Pink Floyd. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's true. That's the true. I've never fact. thought about it that way. They, That's a real they fact. use synth and arpeggiators and stuff in their music yeah. when nobody else was doing it. And then their music got really popular, even though a lot of that was a part of it. And that, and that part of Dark Side is a. Yeah. You listen to that, John and you're Carpenter, like, the 80s. that's that's <laughs> all the the precursors to all this digital stuff that everybody uses now to create music. Like it wouldn't be what it is 
with if they had not done what they did at the time. Yeah, it wouldn't have been completely shifted the paradigms yeah. of of popular music. I think, and it was almost like poetry too. Yeah. Like if you read the lyrics, it's so deep. Mm-hmm. That's one yeah, band that it breaks my heart that we'll probably never get to go to a reunion show. Right? No, we won't. There's two out of four members are dead and gone. We'll yeah. never ever two, ever see them. And the other two I couldn't care less about each other. Yeah. So <laughs> I know, and and stuff like that breaks my heart, man. I mean, it would. I'll still try to go to a solo show whenever we're actually able to go to big shows like that again. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it breaks my heart, man. I'd Who would you go to see? It. Would you go see Roger or would you go see Gilmore? I got a, I got a hard-hitting question for you. Ooh. There's a point in seeing them both individually. I, yeah, yeah I'm trying to think of who like, I would see one, first. You had to pick one and like your budget was for one of them this year. Oh, man. Would same it be day, Waters same, or Gilmore? Yeah, same day, two different arenas. You had yeah. to pick one. That's a tough one. Gilmore. I I'd don't know. Gilmore. I'm just going I'm just going to say Gilmore. I probably go see Roger Waters just cuz everybody else is going to see Gilmore. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Somebody's got to hold it out for him. Yeah. And your bass player. Big, he you was know, a big part of, stuff. you know, all that awesome the lyrical content, yeah. content and True. theatrics behind all that. But like you, 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 you want to go hear another guitar player play the solo in time that's not David Gilmore? It, that, that's, are, are man, that was gonna, a tough one. You going to go hear stuff from the wall with David Gilmore playing the lead guitar and having someone else singing all those parts instead of Roger Waters? Mm, that's a, that's a, you oh, got me. That's a you good got me. one. Turnabout's fair play. <laughs> I, I just always respected Gilmore as a musician, and that's why I would like to see him. But, yeah, man, that's a tough one. God, that's that was a tough one. Gilmore is the expectation for what you ought to be if you're going to pick up a guitar. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're going to do anything, do what that guy does because that guy is awesome. Did, did y'all listen to their last album? Uh, it, it was a few years ago, and, and it didn't get as big as it should have. I don't know that I've checked that one out, man. I'm, I'm stuck in the old stuff. Yeah. I hate to be that way. I generally try to be very forward-thinking about stuff. Well, it was, it was weird anyway. Like if you, it, it was very experimental, and they only sing on the last song, and it's just for a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, I can't even tell you what the name of it is. That's how popular so, it got. Is it something like In but, the Rivers? Was it something about rivers? Well, yeah, the, the the cover is like somebody in a river. I think it's like something about time. When I I don't know, I'll look it up here. The but, timeless uh, river. The time that sounds so good. Is that, you're you're on to something there. That but, sounds familiar to me. One of my favorite albums by like them is uh, Vision Bill. The endless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The end. The endless river. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was named after that. What was it named after? Some of it is like, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Bell. some of it is hmm. B-sides from Division Bell that Gilmore reworked. and Maybe. If I'm not mistaken. Division Bell, it began. That's where I kind of fell off. I'm not a big, I'm not big into, I don't know the Division Bell very well. It was pretty synth heavy. I did, a lot of people will hate on the wall and like they love Dark Side more than they do the wall, but man, the wall's where I'm at. Okay, like, I, got, I got a question for y'all then. That grooviness. Dark Side or the wall? I'm the wall all the way. Animals. Oh, that's a good one. I, I like I, I like Uma Guma. That, that's that's one of my favorites. Uma Guma is. Uh, well, we, we, we can't we can't say what up. that stands for, but mm-hmm. people can go Google that on their own time. Uma Guma. That was back in the Sid Barrett days. Yeah, man. So it was it was out there. A little flavor wild. of weird. That's what's up. Well, well, that was that was another thing too. They kind of started the whole. Well, I guess it's arguable because you had bands like the Grateful Dead and Jimmy too that was pushing the whole psychedelic scene, but they're the ones that really carried it on into the seventies. Yeah. I would say if Jimmy lived to the seventies, who knows what he would have done with psychedelic yeah, rock? It's well, hard to say. It's kind of like the other psychedelic stuff is like feel good psychedelic. You know, ooh, we're having a good time dancing Fire at a music mountains, festival yeah. on drugs, yeah. and then there's Pink Floyd, which is like an introspective journey. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it can get dark at times. It's, it's probably going to. You know. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I, I never like really. Well, uh, they they pushed Grateful Dead pushed the psychedelic culture, but mm. as far as music, yeah, I just kind of consider them jam folk band. jam band. 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 Yeah, the jam band. Like, yeah. They started jam banding. Like, give them that. They started the whole jam band thing. Now there's a million bands that do exactly what they did, exactly the way they did it. Yeah. Good. You know. Good on. I just. Uh, <laughs> Grateful Dead never really did get me. Like yeah. Floyd, well, you can't even put any of those people in the same category. You, know? nah. you got the Grateful Dead, they did their jam bandy thing, which had elements of blues. But 
Jimmy played the blues, which had elements of psychedelic yeah. stuff. But Floyd added this whole other theatrics, the theatrical, uh, a deeper concept. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's just a whole big deeper. It's much, much deeper and more poetic than the rest of them. But have I you agree. seen that meme that's like Pink Floyd be like, we live in a society, and then a 15-minute guitar solo? <laughs> have you seen that meme? That's, that's basically I what animals that, is. That's it's just, yeah, it's just, we live in a society. <laughs> but but the thing is, though, man, it is, it is just a trip from front to the beginning with a Pink Floyd album. The first album that I ever heard by them was Dark Side of the Moon. And I remember my... Me as a little kid, my dad playing it for me, and it just blew my mind. Right. I'm like, this is music? Like, I, I just, I, I couldn't believe that it was this, it could, that music could be that complex. Right. You know, they kicked off Paul McCartney on that album. Yeah. He was supposed to be featured on there, and they said no. Yeah, he, he like him and uh, Paul McCartney and his wife, like, recorded well, stuff I mean, for like, it and you everything. Go back to the stuff that, that, uh, that, Pink Floyd was doing in the in the sixties and like the earliest earliest parts of their career, there was a lot of shared influence between those two bands. Oh yeah, well, like they, the Beatles they, and Pink Floyd kind of came up together in yeah. the same kind of scene. Well, they were uh, both recording at Abbey Road Studios too, right? And uh, they were wanting to have like a bunch of just random people doing the voices and stuff yeah. on the album, like the one guy that done the laughing. Uh, I, I forget who that was. I think that was like Nicole Kidman's dad or right. something like that. There, that was like some weird yeah. fun fact. But uh, see, it's like, but to them though, it's like kicking off Paul McCartney. He was he, like to us, that's like, oh my God, you would get rid of Paul McCartney. But to them, that's like getting rid of your cousin Jim. That but still, like that he, records at the Paul, same get studio. out of here. You know, on, Paul. Your voice don't match what we're doing in here. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, uh, well, apparently, like he was taking it, like he wasn't taking it serious enough. They said uh, he was joking around about some stuff, and to them, they were wanting to make like a really serious album. Mm-hmm. So they like he recorded stuff and everything, but they just said no, we ain't going to use it. They had a very serious message yeah. that they were wanting to convey that did not require anybody to be joking about it. It's exactly. Some serious content. We're but, trying to say something. But it was a very gutsy move on their part because before Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd wasn't anything. I mean, yeah, they, they had like the saucer full of secrets mm-hmm. and some of those, but I mean, before Dark Side of the Moon, they didn't have like a number one album or anything like that. Nobody really knew who they were. So to kick off a Beatle on your album, that probably would have helped it skyrocket. That is a gutsy move on their part. The but it's respectful, it was too. It the right move. Yeah. It was oh, yeah, the course. right move 100%. But it wouldn't have been nothing had they not experienced what had happened with Sid at the time. Oh, that's, yeah. the kinda, that's the kind of that's the kind of cajones that define great artists, in my opinion. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 